Nara Sugar. And- <laughs> All right, we're just live. Funny. Screw it. <laughs> Who cares about trying to get this done professionally? We're live oh. now. Welcome back to Seekers of Sarmanath, everybody. Apologies for the long- lengthy break. We had to find a way to get our video back up and working, but diapers have been acquired and we are ready to play some D and D. So, uh, everyone. I want you to roll me some initiative uh, as we are getting ready to fight us some uh, evil thing. A nightmare. Yes. I'm having a hard time getting you all on the screen, but that'll fix itself over time. Whoa. So, Jagar, who is actually Quartz, rolls Oh, yeah, I should change my name, shouldn't I? (laughs) That's okay. Q is 12, uh, Gorik is a nice 15, uh, Janlar is a 19, and a Rose with a nice Hello. 13. Excellent, and I shall roll for our creatures. Uh, I need to get some books out. There we go. I should have probably done this during the break, eh? Mm. That's all right. Yeah, that's shit. Oh, you didn't have any time. So that is a twenty-three wow. for our oh, darklings, and we have a, another exact same roll for the elders, and we have the nightmare. Can I nightmare. tame it? Can you tame the nightmare? Well, you can. You can ride it and burn your butt. Uh, I, you have I'm to just, reject the nightmare. That's I how it works. Because if you accept the nightmare as real, you get dragged into it. And oh. that goes at three. So the first to go are these <laughs> small little fey creatures. Uh, you see them, uh, Hugh, uh, on t- uh, some distance away from you. They seem to flit in and out of the shadows cast by the light of this fell horse. Uh, the the entirety of their body is wrapped in these odd cloaks. The only things that you can see are sharp, pointy metal swords that they hold at their sides and deep red eyes coming from deep within the cowl of their of their hooded figures. Um, the darklings move together um, with a strange uneasiness flitting in and out of shadows as they move uh, and they are going to double move up to you as fast as their little legs will take them. 20, 25, 30. They just, they move in an odd pattern, just kind of almost bouncing from shadow to shadow, not really stopping uh, in any one place too long as they make their way up the hill. As I said before the break, you hear an audible, fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Two, two, two. They make their moves uh, and they brandish sharp knives. As they do, the rest of you kind of down at the bottom of the hill uh, begin to see these creatures uh, as their cloaked forms begin flitting up uh, and up and up towards the rest of the party at the top of the hill. Their brandished swords all pointing towards Hugh on top of the rock. Uh, which leads us to Janlar. You are behind this bush here as you see these creatures making their way forward. What do you do? Um, I'm going to step out from behind the bush and cast uh, Slow on a 60 foot cube Uh huh. Um, around the three creatures that didn't move forward. Ooh, absolutely. Is it within your range? Yeah, it's 120 foot range. Beautiful. You're going to cast slow. They're entitled to a saving throw, yes? Correct, a wisdom saving throw. Absolutely. So the two large, so you'll notice that these four that move forward are smaller. They're about the size of a gnome or 
the pixie friend you had. These two up here are more fully grown, also completely enshrouded in the in the uh, uh, cloaks. Uh, but from out from whatever bits of, of cloak that it doesn't cover, a kind of a light shines out of them. Uh, excellent. So, uh, wisdom saving throws for these people. Uh, they roll a 21, a 10, and the nightmare is not as wise. Rolls a 16. What is your saving throw? 15. 15. So, uh, one of them is slowed. We will give him a nice little snail icon. Excellent! Uh, anything else you're doing with your turn, good sir? Um, uh, moving backwards. You're moving backwards, trying to get away. Uh, Don't leave me. I'm squishy. You're squishy? I'm squishy. Moving back this way, then. <laughs> All right. Janna retreats back towards the rocks in the pile behind him, having cast his slow spell. Oh, wait, there's more space up here. I could say. Excellent. Behind the rocks after casting his slow spell. Excellent. Quartz, you see the magic radiate away from Janlar as he slows a creature ahead of you. You see the four creatures wrapped in cloaks stalking your new friends. What do you do? Uh, Quartz runs up to here, I think. I need to make sure this is the correct line. Yeah. So Quartz runs up to there. And uh -huh. uh, I have a clear clear sight on this, this uh, nightmare thing, right? Okay, absolutely. Okay. So Quartz starts to like shuffle his feet along the ground, and uh -huh. you can like see visible like tendrils of electricity start building up in them as he does it. <laughs> he puts his staff on the ground and it just stands perfectly straight as he starts building up more and more electricity before finally reaching out and grabbing the staff and a giant bolt of lightning shoots out. A bolt of lightning he... in a straight line. Yeah, I believe so. I believe that this guy here is gonna make a saving throw. And yeah, this guy and so here. will the horse. Yes, yep. awesome. Uh, DC 15. DC 15 dexterity saving throw. Uh, against 23 damage. So for the little uh, fey creature, uh, that is a fail. fail. That darkling will take 23 points of thunder damage. Lighting him up. His, his whole form, like, blasts backwards. Like, you knock him back, like, a full square into this bush. Uh, and he takes a lot of damage, just smoldering, like, electricity around him. Uh, this horse here is going to save. I think Dex is much better for them than Wisdom. Uh, the Nightmare saves. Well, it's only plus two. Uh, but the the magic of the fairy like horse, this Nightmare mm -hmm. dodges out of the way, taking only okay. half of that lightning bolt damage. Yes. Excellent. Uh, and I believe that is the end of your turn, Quartz? Uh, yeah. Excellent. All right. That brings us around to Rose. No, Gorik. Gorik, you see this bolt of lightning emanate from your new childlike friend's staff. What do you do? Um, we are... Let me look at the, the full situation here. Zoom the map out a little bit. Okay. There's a good few of these dudes. I would like to... Uh, who's... Nobody... We don't... Do we even have a frontline character anymore, or is it just the rogue? Hugh. Hugh's our frontliner. <laughs> yeah. <Hi. laughs> the rogue is a tank. Now. Okay. Solid 60 right. days. Rogue is a tank. You got it. I got this. Yeah. <laughs> um... Regis, protect me. <laughs> somebody. Warwick still got his in-town spells prepared. So <coughs> nice. Yeah. Only been on the boat for a couple of days. Yeah, right. Uh, I'm gonna cast Spirit Guardians. Okay. Um, which is concentration. So I'm gonna cast Spirit Guardians, and Gorik will move up as fast as his little old man legs will let him move. Here. How big is the aura on your Spirit Guardians? I think it's 15 feet, but we're gonna find out. Okay. <laughs> Spirit Guardians. Uh, yeah, around me to a distance of 15 feet. Um, I will designate the party to be unaffected by their... Alrighty. Uh, you... Any, any creature that enters... Affected creature that enters the area has its speed halved 
and has to make a wisdom save if it moves in, <coughs> and it takes damage if it does not. All right, excellent. A sw- an aura of a deathly power uh, swarms around you. The spirits of your long dead ancestors roam around the the aura, their dwarven weapons in hand. Uh, as you stride your way forward. Uh, Rose, you see the bolt of lightning and this aura of the of Gorv's past around your friends. What do you do? I will <coughs> gently tap my staff on the ground. Uh-huh. I need the grass around. Um, just make whooshing noises as I conjure animals, and I would like eight I think water's the uh, what they are. Like, da da da. Yes, eight beasts of challenge rating, a quarter or lower. Alrighty, you are going to have so many beasts. <laughs> they all have the same initiative, so that's gonna be fine. Yes. Uh, let us see what you get for a quarter. Jenna really wants to throw out eight more of those as well next turn. <laughs> for, for the record, these summoned creatures are being summoned after I designated targets to be excluded. Yeah. So Fine. Please do not create a blender of death around Gorik as you're just summoning woodland beings. <laughs> can you make yourself like a. Can you give yourself uh, the aura or something so we can see it? Or make a box or whatever? I uh, should have a circle around him. I see a circle around me, do you not? I don't Mm-mm. know. Refresh. Okay, I'm refreshing. I am refreshing. Please hold the phone. Da, 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 da. It should be there. Uh, you. Well, bad news. I'm actually blind. <laughs> I don't see it either. <laughs> That's weird. That is weird. Is it on stream? It's on stream. It's on stream. Yeah, yeah I don't know why you can't see it. That's weird. I can see it. Greg what color? Am I color blind? What color is it? It's orange. He changed it's like it to yellow. Right now. Yeah. Right. Alrighty. So what you summon. Blue? Here, Rose, can you see it now? now no, it's not that she's blind. I don't think the color <laughs> is the problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't see the aura either. Yeah, we can't see it. You summon eight panthers to your aid. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I know does. here we go. Uh, you get eight of these suckers. Thank you. you want me to roll initiative for them? Yes, please. Uh, no, Can actually, I... yes, yeah, fuck it. Roll initiative for them. That what do good. they have? Just remember the mod. I'm uh, gonna look the them up in a second. Panther sec. has initiative of plus two. Thirty. Alrighty, excellent. The Panthers will go at thirteen. And here is your eight Panthers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven and eight that you have summoned on this side of the nice of the guy. You should all be able to control panthers. Uh, excellent. So there are panthers. I gotta add panther to our list. Panther is on thirteen. Nice. So there we go. That's my turn. That ends your turn, Rose. Um, Hugh. You are the next to go. You are standing oh. on this rock, seeing the the swirling dwarven ancestors of Gorik uh, around you. You see these creatures coming towards you, and eight panthers summoned in your defense. What do you do? All right, Esteban, get ready. We're about to have a rough time. And I pull my rapier of wounding out, and I'm going to. I'm just going to charge them. Otherwise, I'm just going to die needlessly standing on a rock. So. Uh, okay. Uh, I feel like that one. So I'm going to go to the north here. Just flick over to control tool. Jump down and I'm going to attack it and have Esteban aid me and stab it also. All right. You have control of Esteban. You can move him around. Uh, go ahead and roll to hit as you dive off the rock, tumble towards one of these small creatures uh, and attack it with your, with your weaponry. See if this a 16! That will hit the smaller Darkling. Uh, please roll damage. Uh, oh, I forgot to disable sneak attack. Excellent. So that does... Uh, so no sneak attack, so only 13 for you? 
Uh, wait, we did. Did we rule that yes. Esteban? Counts, Esteban so should count. Yes, the, unless you're yes. specifically ignoring it. Alrighty. He takes 27 points of damage as you strike into this small creature with your rapier of wounding. He ticks one pit of wounding for his turn. Uh, Esteban, please attack. Garcia the fourth! 14. Esteban, Garcia the fourth hits with a 14. Please roll to hit with Esteban, or please roll damage with Esteban. Uh, Esteban is not a rogue, so he doesn't get your sneak attack. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> uh, but he takes another nine as this small phase just peppered with your two twin rapiers. Just holes appear in him. He starts to bleed out on one knee, but he looks up to you shrouded in his cloak, his red eyes just intense with hatred and killing. Uh, excellent. Sugar. Damn it, I was here to offer you sugar. <laughs> that is your I turn, heard. and that leads us to the elders. Uh, the elders will walk up, and they can not really get there in time. They, too, move in an odd, irregular pattern, just kind of flitting in between shadows. Uh, that one only has half movement, by the way. This guy only gets to about here, as he cannot move that far. Uh, this one... This guy moves up to the rock and starts staring down all the living creatures around him. This creature here, though, the mighty nightmare, uh, will, instead of just charging right at you, seemingly step into another world as it paws forward. Uh, it strides into... Um, a, a, like, almost warp in reality, and it comes... It comes... It reappears right here. As it steps back through into this reality. Um, fortunately for you, you have an aura in effect. As soon as it re-enters the material plane, uh, you make it save at wisdom. Yep. Uh, it fails. So your spiritual guardians um, <laughs> slam into this creature, striking it with all of their spiritual dwarven weapons. Uh, please give me some damage. It takes 18 radiant damage. 18 radiant damage. It actually doesn't have any vulnerabilities. So it will just take that 18 damage and scream. It's like nightmarish scream. Uh, and it rises up with its hooves to strike at you. Um, for... Uh, D6. Oh. A 21 to strike at Gorik. Uh, 21 will strike Gorik. Alright, it deals... 2d8 plus... 4 bludgeoning damage. And an additional... Uh, 2d6 fire damage. Uh, for a grand total of 19 damage with its powerful front hooves just raining down upon you. Uh, I will need a concentration check, uh, which you pass with flying colors. Alrighty. Excellent. Uh, no issues there, but that was half my health. <laughs> oh Gorik boy. feels no pain. Uh, that is the His nightmares. nerves failed long ago. That is the nightmare's turn, which brings us back to the top of the round, where we have the smaller darklings. Uh, we'll start with this one up here, engaged in combat with Hugh. Uh, it brings its nasty short sword to bear, uh, still trying to keep its form hidden among the um, among the, fo the clo folds of its cloak, uh, and it strikes out uh, with its nasty sword. Uh, for a 14 to hit you. Ah, it misses me. <laughs> it like, misses Christ. you. Alrighty. Uh, and with that, it ends its turn. Uh, these ones here are just going to jump in here. Five. Uh, 
10. Uh, go ahead and save, it does, for wisdom. It only has one wisdom. Uh, it <laughs> fails, so it has half damage. Go ahead and roll damage for this guy as he enters right. your... Do you, do you want me to roll a new damage every time or just use the... Let's roll a new damage every time. It's more fun okay. that way, right? More dice! 13, 13 points of damage for this Darkling. It's radiant if that matters to uh... Darklings. I don't know if it does. No, although I feel like it should. It is light sensitive, but it is not technically vulnerable to radiant damage. Um, it takes that, its speed is slowed, but it, oh, actually, I think it can only get here now. It can't reach you. Uh, it is very sad about this. This one, <laughs> 15, 20, 25, 30, it can't reach anybody but a panther, so it will stab at the panthers uh, with, the, with abandon. Uh, with an 18 to hit one of your panthers, uh, which it will for... Do we just uh, take average HP for the panthers? Sure, that sounds good to me. Okay. The ballsy dude. Easy, I think. To a group of eight panthers and attack one. Yeah, this <laughs> <laughs> that is Hobie really We don't have right tactics panther. for this whatever is, reason. This is the real hero of yeah. the But there's still seven panthers. <laughs> <laughs> I killed one! Ah! Bless you. Thank you. Like in, in reality, just like the number of bodies of panthers, which is yeah. Crazy. Faye, that was a perfect opportunity for me to get an authentic German. Alrighty, and I did uh, <laughs> he deals <laughs> ten points of damage to this panther right in front of him uh, with his nasty short sword as it strikes down and true. One, two, three. Well, he's still alive. The last darkling. <laughs> uh, he's gonna try to get in here too. Five, ten. He had more to go. Things. He's actually going to skirt around the outside. Seeing what uh, seeing what happened to his friend, he's going to stay just on the outside of this. And as a small creature, he fills only half a square. So he does not enter into your light there, waiting until next round to do his worst. Uh, and that is the Darkling's turn, which brings us to Janlar. What do you do? Uh, I'm mute. Oh, no, you're not muted. Just... Oh, sorry, I was just thinking. I'm going to cast <laughs> Ray of Frost on the... Actually? Yeah, I'm going to cast Ray of Frost on the Flaming Horse. On the Flaming Horse. All right. Uh, please roll to hit. A four. Oh, it's... Sorry, no. it's, not, it's not roll to hit. My bad. Roll to hit. D27. <laughs> A miss. ten, it does indeed miss, as the the horse even... No, it's not even slowed. It just dodges effortlessly out of the way of your ray of icy magic that flies past it into the night. Uh, the horse continues to bear down on on Gormak. Gorik. Gorik. On Gorik. Uh, excellent. Uh, Quartz, you are standing next to Gorik in this... Sh in this uh, spiritual like aura what do you do um quartz is going to use some of his meta magic here mm -hmm. and the air around him starts to warp out a little bit and you see like two quartzes kind of like stride forward splitting from the original Ooh. um and they're going to stare down uh this and this Okay. And they just kind of like slowly cover their eyes, and I need both of them to make constitution saving constitution throws. Constitution saving throws. Absolutely. Uh, constitution for the Darkling is a 13, which fails. Yep. Uh, and the Nightmare is a uh, 23. So the Nightmare right. is not blinded. It sounds like yep. blind. Yeah, it's blind. Um, but uh, this Darkling here has been blinded. Uh, we will give him... I don't know. We'll, we'll give him like this. He's blind. Oops, not that. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Excellent. They go blind and they drop dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Turns out if they can't see, they die. Whoa! <laughs> awesome. All right. That is Quartz's turn. Uh, yeah. That brings us back to Gorik. What do you do? Uh, uh, I'm first, I've got a question. Do you yes. see this cougar right here? Or not cougar, panther here? 
Uh, no. No. There's no. nothing there. The There's one. one right here. There's one, like, a square below. Okay, for some reason on my roll 20, that panther is not where it shows up. There, it fixed itself. That was really weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, I was looking I was looking at the stream, and I'm like, why is that panther in a different square on the stream than it is on my roll 20? This is really weird. Um, Gorik is going to just... Roll 20. Excellent. Right. Gorik's just going to move here. Okay. To this That, that clever... Um, that that uh, darkling that thought it was so clever to avoid. Oh, right and it there. enters it. It will yeah. save. Well, it'll make a save at the start of its at turn. At the start too. of its turn. Yes, yeah. that's correct. Uh, and then I'm going to attack the uh, nightmare with... Waiting for the wolves. Vampiric Touch is a concentration spell, too, and I'd rather keep Spirit Guardians up. Okay. Um... So, what? Oh man, I wish I had daylight. That'd be great against these dark wings. <laughs> Fucking die, incineration. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will. Oh no, nope, that's concentration. What these? Oh, th these the the elders are slowed, right? Uh, one. this one is slowed right here. This that one, one has its save. What's what's the little icon on uh, it? The icon shows that uh, every now and then he radiates light. The way the okay. horse radiates light. Um, he has like a 10 foot little radius around him. So you would still be able to see him in the darkness. Though the the smaller ones can disappear entirely. Okay. Um, I think I'm actually just going to attack with a mace attack okay yeah i don't have any any spells that'll be well actually no you know what i, I know what i'll do instead of moving here i'll take a step forward here uh -huh. and get in in base to base with the other one it'll still get that thing in it puts the panther in less risk and it puts the nightmare and the darkling here and i'm gonna use uh the word of radiance cantrip Ooh, word of radiance. Okay. So. So they save versus wisdom or take damage, right? It is a constitution save. Save versus constitution. Okay. Yep. Uh, so the nightmare uh, fails his saving throw, uh, and the two darklings. Uh, uh, the one darkling doesn't need to. Just the just it's a five foot radius. Oh, okay. Uh, so the the first darkling failed anyway. So uh, okay. two fails on those fails. on those darklings there. So then the nightmare and the darkling right next to me will both take seven. Uh, radiant seven damage. radiant damage for the for nightmare and this darkling okay the the darklings react very negatively to radiant damage uh it doesn't hurt them but you can see them like recoil deeper into their cloaks and they hiss in some like f small feyish language uh as as the light wraps around them uh excellent that is yep. Gorik's turn. That yep. brings us to Rose. What do you do? I will unmute myself. Excellent. And Sorry. then I shall... Very good, right? Okay. <sighs> did, did Hugh take any damage? Hugh has no. yet to take any damage. Okay. I am so proud. Nobody's hurt yet then, right? Nope. Okay. I mean, there's then, some darklings that could use some well, healing. Except, except me. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess I, I guess I could use healing word on myself, but just hold it for now. I'll hold it for now. Hold okay. It. I'm going to turn into a black bear, Greg. Ooh, turning into a black bear. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna slowly but determined waddle forward into Gorg's creepy aura. This isn't the creepy aura. This is just the the radiant aura. I haven't activated the creepy aura yet. You're telling me that's not still not creepy when you do it as a cleric of the no, grave? No, now it's just like pale dead dwarves. <laughs> yeah, just, right you know, oh, pale, yeah. pale dead dwarves Not, not yeah. scary at all. Yeah. I get it. I get Nothing it. Nothing creepy. Yeah, it's pretty par for the course. You and I stand there. You turn into a black <laughs> bear. Awesome. All right, you waddle forward into the the aura of uh, dead dwarves of yesteryear and get ready to attack this this fell horse. Excellent. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and with that, uh, I believe that's the end of your turn, right? Because you don't get the Circle the Moon bonus action. Oh. Right. Excellent. Uh, Rose turns into a bear. Hugh, uh, you are in f combat with this single Darkling in front of you. What do you do? Sorry about that. Um, just getting informed of things. All right, so I will attack this bloke right here. Hold up, it'd be good if I wasn't using the ruler tool. Attacking the guy, continuing my Perfect. rapier assault. What a a sixteen hits. Um, roll any amount of damage. Yes, this one dies. Uh, and as he does so. He dies in an explosion of light. Your your rapier rips into him, and the, as the light kind of falls from his eyes, that red glow of hatred, his body begins to like expand and glow as as like streaks of bright yellow light form across it, and he explodes outward in a force of bright yellow light. It's almost blinding. Please make a Constitution saving throw, DC ten. 18. All right, Woo! you shield your eyes, uh, and the explosion of light uh, uh, does not affect you um, as the creature dies. Um, okay, so I want to use my bonus action to uh -huh. roll a stealth check. Uh, okay, so you're going to try to hide okay. somewhere where you are not seen. Where are you Wait. hiding? Uh, I'm in a bush. <laughs> All right, you begin to climb a tree and try to hide in there as the best you can. Uh, please give me that uh, dex. Uh, yeah, give me that stealth, stealth check. Uh, never mind. All right, uh, you uh, hide away as best you can in that tree. Uh, and I will send Esteban. How far can Esteban move? Esteban can move thirty feet. Oh, well, I'll move him over there. Boom. All right. Stab away into this one. Go, Esteban! Hell yeah, I love Esteban. I, I'm so happy I got to keep him. Esteban Montague Garcia the fourth strikes out with a 13, and his blade is turned aside by the Darkling with a sneer. You almost see its red eyes lock with yours. So Esteban was turned aside? Yes. Okay. Uh, oh, Esteban. Where did Esteban, Esteban start? Did he start Here. in that space? How far did he move? Uh, 10, 15, far. 20, 25, 30. He's good. Okay. No, I I, meant, I was wondering if he could get to me after he does that. But I don't think no, he's, he's going to be out of movement for sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Excellent. That is Hugh's turn. Uh, Panthers, we totally missed you. Panthers, it's fine. go. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Um, Please just surround this one guy. Just mop. Yep. I will, well, I'll, I'll go with, with this one first. Uh... Hold on, what do they actually- give me a second, I have like three fucking different monster things that open a... Da -da -da -da. Even though Panthers are packed- Plus four to hit. Plus four to hit and 1d6 plus two. I'm terrified of the idea of eight Panthers jumping on me. Why don't you roll all the hits that you're gonna roll at once, and then we'll roll. A well, group the thing of is, damage. we can do that, but if it dies, right, then I get to make the attack on somebody else, right? Okay. Is that legit? Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one, two, three. So I get seven e twenties, and then these are all uh plus four. So one, 18, two, three, four hits. Seven, right. fourteen, eight, twenty-two. Okay, and then that is... So that's five total. Five hits. Yeah, because of the... the five hits. Thing. Right, I didn't roll damage for that one yet. Okay, five, D, six, plus two. So those are the bite attacks, and then they also get... Uh, six... E. Wait, how many how many hits did we have? Wait, five. Five. I think the bite oh, is. Oh, hold on! Attacking. I gotta roll the second one. I gotta. No, yeah, but they have two attacks, right? Right. You're you'd get more than a plus two because each each d6 is a plus two, right? And damage, yes. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, so it would be. be, be um, so it'd be twenty-four. Ten. Ten. Okay. It would be twenty. Yeah, twenty-four. So you've done twenty-four damage to this guy. Keep going. 
Now rip him apart. <laughs> right. Um, oh, yeah, show him the both. error of his ways, fighting a pack of eight panthers by himself. <laughs> but what I don't know is, you know, if if, if I had multi attack, which was say multi attack, you get another. Oh yeah, no, right? I think you do the claw attack. I don't think you do that. I... Um, but you can do the bite as a bonus action if you knock them down using pounce. No, that's no. I think you always get the bite, but you get the bite on top. Of... Yeah, it's a bonus action in that case. So okay. basically, you can choose that's to make the claw action, attack then, yeah. on top of your pounce. Is kind yeah, of the idea that's there. my. That's my action. Okay, excellent. So your panthers surround this creature, start clawing at it, trying to rip it apart. Uh, and it just keeps on living, turning away as many claws as it can. Some of them rip into it, but it is uh, a resilient little fey creature. Excellent. That brings us to our elders. Um, this elder here. Better that way. Now he gets six seconds of knowing. Is it true to say? 15, 20, 25, 30. It's as far as he can move on his turn. This guy is just very far away from anything he can kill. This is the closest thing he can kill. So he's going to kill a panther. He runs up with his swords bared, trying to extinguish the life of whatever he can find. Uh, and he rolls... <laughs> Plus five. Uh, with a 19 and an eight. So he only will strike once. Uh, and he gets... Uh, he does 19 points of damage to this panther right here. Oh, that panther's dead then. All right, we have a dead panther. Boom, it... Psh re unconjures out of existence as he strikes at that the nightmare uh is going to look around and at the start of its turn it needs to make another wisdom save sure wisdom save for this thing here uh 16 uh 16 does pass so it'll take seven radiant damage. seven radiant damage for the nightmare it doesn't like and being in here and it doesn't it still think halved it doesn't think its friends should be in here either. So it designates these two creatures and itself and steps into the ethereal plane. And Does it, it still provoke opportunity attacks doing so? Uh, that is a great I, question. I say do it. Go for okay. it. I was going to say I doubt it, but I wouldn't disallow it. Yeah, go nuts. All right. Opportunity attacks. Amazed. Yes! 1d20 plus 4 for my mace? Yep. Go, Faye! Maul is not. Hit. No, okay. your mace yeah. does not strike right. it. It phases out too quickly. Rose, you do strike it with your bear form. For 10 more points of damage. That's not the damage. That was my second attack. That's not my damage. You only get one I roll, attack. I roll one more. What? Oh, right. It's an Sorry, opportunity attack. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I keep forgetting that. We're not playing two. It's okay. One second. Um, one, eight damage. Eight points nice. of damage instead. Okay. Excellent. And with that, these creatures step into the ethereal plane, and they're going to come out. Actually, we need to make a choice. It can see two different people. Um, highs or lows, Dan? Uh, highs. You're lucky. The three Ooh. of them appear here. And they, this one was five feet here, and this one was five feet right in front of it. All right, they appear on this side of Hugh Seafeather, and the horse raises its mighty hooves and strikes down upon Hugh. Is it? Please, no. It's not an action for it to teleport, right? It is indeed, but it's an also attack. Ah. Yes. Uh, so we get a mighty 17 to hit you, Hugh. That is gonna hit me. That is gonna hit you. All right. So you will take 2d8 plus 4 plus an additional 2d6 fire damage. I'm gonna uncanny dodge That's that That's a lot shit. of damage. All right, yeah. you uncanny dodge, and you will take 11 points of damage from its mighty hooves as they bear down upon you. 
Alrighty, excellent. That is their turn, and now it the is ones. the Darklings. This Darkling here is blinded, so he rolls with disadvantage to strike at Hugh. Uh, that is a... He rolls a 12. He will miss. Oh. Uh, it can also uh, make a new constitution save after its turn. And it's after its turn will make a constitution save against the... Hail the Silver Lord. Ah, oh. oh, it fails. Oh. It has continued to be blind. This Darkling, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, will move up here, and it will attack with a normal attack on Hugh. For a 10! No, thank you. You are truly the uncanniest of rogues. This one here is surrounded by panthers. <laughs> There's still one more injured panther, correct? Mm-hmm, that's yeah. right. He is going to aim oh. at said injured panther uh, with a 21. Uh, and that's he it. will strike it for d4 plus 3 uh, plus 2d6. That's a kill. Uh, I don't think it can 13 do less than points of damage on the wounded mm -hmm. panther. Mm -hmm. All right. As it dies, it screeches its like victorious howl, uh, and that ends their turns. Janlar, you see the horse teleport away from the enemies, uh, away from your allies, out of the circle. What do you do? Um, I'm gonna step forward so I can get within thirty feet of you, um, and then I'm gonna cast. Shatter on ten foot radius, trying to hit these three. Um, I, I think you're gonna have a hard time point. hitting all three of them. Well, yeah, that you might can't get do it. Actually, if you if you centered it on the horse, but then I think you'd hit you'd hit a uh, Hugh doing it. Yeah, he's he's not Tom. All right, he doesn't want to kill me. <laughs> hey, I never tried to kill you. Yeah, it would be tough to hit all it's of them. It's going to be really hard to hit them all. Just I do think this. you got to choose okay. two. This one. Then I'll make sure to hit the, the two that are the the horse. If the you, wait, you said 10 foot radius, right? Yeah. All right. Do here. Do right here. Then, it still wouldn't reach because it's, oh. it's a circle. That's, yeah, but it's still three people, right? This is 15. Technically, 5e, yeah, 5e is a little weird. Because diagonals count as just normal. Alrighty, so yep. well you wouldn't count like this. Which yeah. one are you? Which one? Which two are you targeting? The horse and the veteran, or the elder, or the horse and the dark? The one? elder. The elder. The elder. Alrighty, they will make Constitution saving throws. Uh, the nightmare saves with a twelve, and the elder uh, saves with an eighteen. So the elder will take half of 12 which is six and the nightmare will take the full 12. the nightmare is starting to look worse for the wear its natural flames are beginning to flicker and be lower uh but it still has an ethereal hatred <laughs> radiating off of it still seems ready and capable to fight all right uh and that is the end of your turn so that brings us to quartz uh you saw the horse teleport away from you what do you do um, I am going to move right up to here. And once again, Quartz puts his, uh, puts his staff on the ground in front of him where it stands straight up uh -huh. and starts shuffling his feet on the ground. Uh, and this time the, <laughs> the electricity that starts building up is a lot more scattered and disjointed. And you see like the air around him start to warp again uh -huh. as two Quartzes reach out for two separate stabs and little, uh, not the same lightning bolt, but two, uh, like lassos kind of electricity come out for this and this. Ooh, interesting. Uh, what spell uh, are you casting here? Witch bolt. Lure. Ah. Witch bolt. Okay. Uh, the 18. Uh, so that's a miss on this, but a hit on the nightmare, I think. Exactly. Assuming it has 18? Okay. Uh, you will hit on an 18, yes. Okay. So it's going to take, I'm casting this as third level. So Ooh. Uh, 25 damage. 25 oh, wow. points of damage. Woo. The horse. And it is now tethered to me. The horse unleashes a scream of like kind of hatred almost if a horse could sound human whatever noise came out of that horse's throat is sounds human as it's struck with that <laughs> its fires will dim down a little bit more but it turns its flamed mane and head to you and stares directly into your eyes 
Okay. All right, that is Quartz's turn. Uh, Gorik, you are in the aura. What do you do? Uh, I'm going to move up to here. Okay. Um, I'm going to use my action to... Let's hang on. Let me move my... There you go. Thank you. I'm going to use my action to tell Esteban... Well, I'm not to tell Esteban. I'm going to tell Esteban, go defend you. You've got this. And then... Of course uh, I do. <laughs> I'm going to cast Light on Hugh, or on, not on Hugh, on Esteban, Garcia, etc., etc. Um, Esteban Garcia the fourth! Esteban Manuel Garcia the fourth. That's the one. Um, so, here, let's do, let's do this and that. Save. So, the white circle around Esteban is, oh wait, did that give... That is so much light. I don't think that's accurate. It's a 20-foot radius of bright light. I don't see any. It's not Manuel. It's Montague. I can't believe we forgot his name. Yeah. Esteban Montague Garcia the Fourth. So the uh, I, I I goofed it. I put it on on Gorik instead of on Esteban. There we go. Let's go back to Gorik. Oh, now I can see light. Yeah. There it is. Oh. oh. There is. Hell Woo! Yeah. There we I go. can see it. Drop. It actually makes it easier to see all the tokens too because of yeah. the contrast. I love it. Save. Okay, so I'm gonna make Gorix or a, a non-yellow color, but the white circle around Esteban is bright light, and the yellow circle around Esteban is all right. dim light. Excellent. And yeah. then I'm gonna use a bonus action to cast Healing Word on myself. All right, excellent. At R two D four plus four. Yeah, I gained nine hit points back. <laughs> But yeah, tell Esteban, go help you, cast light on him, and then send him on his way. He's now a mobile beacon of light. All right, bright light radiates out in the aura around you. All of the creatures wrapped in their cloaks cower away from it and hide behind their folds of cloaks, away from this bright and terrifying light around them. Uh, excellent. Set. That brings us to Rose and the Panthers. Uh, this bright light has beaconed forth across the hill. Uh, what do you do? Wait, is it the Panthers or is it Rose? Because I have different initiatives. You move initiatives. on the same initiative. <laughs> do we? You're okay, that's 13. bad. <laughs> right, excellent. That should make things easier, you would, you would yeah. believe, right? Okay, um, I will do the Panthers first. Panthers um, first, all right. They're surrounding so this poor is... dude in the light. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that is 60, 20 plus 2. Uh, uh, so which is 1, 2 hits. 1 hit, probably? 2, two hits. Two. Okay. Or 11 damage. 11 damage. He is still alive! Barely. <laughs> This Very Darkling good. is holding on, just batting away panther claws <laughs> left and right with his dagger, trying his best to stay out of the light. He's just seething in pain. Right, and I'm gonna... Druid Rose is going to move up here uh -huh. and try to maul at the Nightmare. Ooh, with the bear is gonna go maul the Nightmare. Plus... Four, one is uh, 10, which is a miss. One is an 18. Uh, the 18 will hit. Okay. That is... That's my bear. If Faye needs, like, three what did different I just... monster sheets I, open I at a time. I have two... I have two things open with, like, monster sheets and how, what level I have and everything. It's really confusing. Yeah, if you look at... If you look at Greg's stream, you can see all the auras that I'm looking at on my page right now. <laughs> <laughs> it feels a little bit like I'm DMing against Greg when I'm having the, the, yeah. all those sheets open. It's like, am I rolling or is he? Okay, it's... Uh, one, two, three, four, two. I also have a terrible memory for numbers, so that doesn't really help. Uh, for solid three damage, Greg. There you oh, go. Three Take that. damage. Oh, the nightmare <laughs> doesn't even <laughs> register the bear's existence. It just <laughs> stares at quartz like with fury in its eyes. I guess I just try to go for a bite, but I just go like. And yeah, you just like words. bite its flaming tail a little bit. The bear's like hot. 
in the words of that guy that I sat next to when I was watching Star Wars Episode Eight. <laughs> Pretty much like that. Excellent. Hugh, it's your turn. Your friends have come to your aid. What do you do? Okay. All right, let's get stabby. On a side note, the armor that you gave me has an eight points of reflecting damage. Yes, I totally forgot you bought that armor. So when you get hit, Excellent. remind me and we should be throwing I, some I damage I just remembered. Back. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So going forward, but, remind me, if they are within five feet, okay. if it is a melee strike, you can reflect up to eight points of damage. Okay, so uh, Rose is in melee combat with the horse, right? Correct. Awesome, I stab at the horse. <laughs> All right, you turn to stab at the horse with a 20. Please roll to hit. All right, uh, me, please roll your damage. 14. Let me do some math. Please tell me how you kill the nightmare. After the horse had trampled me previous turn and I've dodged, I feel like it's ready to stealth again afterwards and I've just got like the perfect angle and just stabbed it straight through the peak of its chest into its heart and it just keels over. Mm, it just keels over. It You stab it right through its heart. The flames in its eyes drain out. The flames radiating off its its hooves and mane and tail just wink out and a black dead horse lies on the ground uh, i feel so bad you just see remorse on his face as this horse kills just lays on the ground in the middle of the light the hatred it once had just like visibly almost like physically drains out of the area around it i think my favorite thing about roll 20 is the absolute remorselessness of the big red X over a dead thing. Like, there is just, it's, it's just like, no, fuck that thing, it's dead. dead. All right. Okay, I'm going to cut an a cunning action, disengage. And okay. then I'm going to move around behind this guy. Okay. And then I'm like, Garcia! Come on! Esteban, kill it! All right, Montague, Esteban, Garcia the Fourth races forward and attacks! And schwah! 23 will uh, hit. 23 will hit. Six piercing damage. For six more points of piercing damage on the Elder Darkling. Um, excellent. That is your turn. That brings us to the Elders. Uh, this one is technically in Gorik's uh, aura of effect, so oh, he okay, will so save. <coughs> roll that wisdom save. The He's not a small creature. The Elders are a medium-sized creature, so they fill the whole box. He'll take 23! 23! <laughs> Woo! Wow. Um, okay. He's already taking damage. He gets a lot of pain there. Uh, that is almost max for that. <laughs> so he explodes. Uh, the, yeah. the dwarves hack into him and rip apart his cloak and the light around the sword momentarily is absorbed. Everything from Esteban Montague Garcia IV, the light just flows into his skin, which starts glowing bright, tattoos racing across his face until they it just explode outward in an area around him. I need uh, Hugh C. Feather uh, and Rose the Bear. Oh boy. And it doesn't reach you. No, it doesn't. I need the two of you to make a DC 12 constitution saving throw. I feel like a bear should be pretty good at con, Rose. I, I... Yes. Oof. Well, oh, the Rose is not good at rolling. <laughs> Alrighty, so. <laughs> Stop you... clapping short, I'm coming over in a second, I swear to God. <laughs> you better at rolling, Rose. Not even five, five fucking feet tall. Hugh, you, know, you giving take... shit. <laughs> Hugh, you take three points of damage as radiant energy explodes outward around you. Rose, you take six points of damage uh, from the same explosion. Uh, no, I don't uh, and this one here is going to keep trying to murder Panthers. This I guy. also found my. Hold on, I found my concentration, so the pa panthers disappear. The panthers disappear! These guys all poof out of existence. Uh, these guys then have a little bit something different to do. He can see through the light. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 
He's gonna move around the outside, not wanting to get into the light, and he spies Janlar and takes out his wicked short blade from his waist and flings it as hard as he can at you, uh, attempting to strike you from the outside the light's radius, Janlar. Uh, he rolls a 16 to hit with your mage armor. I don't think that hits. Uh, it does, but I'm going to use shield as a reaction. Okay, you use shield as a reaction to increase your AC, and it, your arcane wards knock away the blade that he hurls at you. Um, and he's very disappointed by this because he can't multi-attack with that. So <laughs> that's his turn. Um, that brings us to the Nightmare who's dead. That brings us to the Darklings. Uh, these guys are both inside of the aura, so they're going to save... Uh, that is a fail, and a fail. Please roll some damage on the Darklings. So, first one's eight, second one's 14. Okay, uh, the 14 on the second one, oh man, they both die. Both of them just are felled by your guardians, each of them exploding outward in an aura of light uh, that doesn't reach any of the party members, so no saves are required. Uh, as these Darklings die, which leaves us one more Darkling down here. He's going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And he, too, will fling his sword outward, trying to strike Janlar with a 10. <laughs> Your arcane wards proving too much for these Darklings down here. Excellent. Um, that brings us to Janlar himself. You've been attacked by these these rogue darklings at the bottom of the screen. What do you do? Um, I'm going to pull out my dagger. and uh, Are you going to run stab one? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to step up right here and uh -huh. lock them in combat. Uh -huh. And then I'm going to stab the small one right here. With my oh, the stab wizard makes his return! <laughs> okay. You should get brass knuckles. For Doesn't Janlar have like eight maximum hit points? No, I got. No, he's better now. He got I'm a few at, levels. I got twenty-one max HP. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I got. I got thirty-seven HP. I can tank. Yeah. All right. So I'm sure. That's I really good. hope that's these things just than, double crit him. I was gonna say, yeah, that's actually more than Gorik can tank. So. All right. And your uh, AC is no, no, sorry, it's, higher. It's, no, it's actually not. It's a uh, sorry. It's a uh, sixteen. A sixteen still hits. Perfect. Fucking stab Eight, wizard. Four, four, stab two. wizard to the rescue. Darn. Three points of damage, but you know what? This is the Darkling that was mauled yeah, by was Panthers, low. and it explodes Perfect. as your dagger stabs through its, like, heart. It just erupts in an explosion of bright light. Uh, I need you to make a DC 10 constitution saving throw. Uh, you pass, uh, and you are not blinded by the searing light of the small darkling. Uh, all right, that yeah, is... Yeah, then I'll turn to face this guy. Yeah, that is your turn. Excellent stab wizarding. Quartz. There is one enemy remaining. He is locked in deadly combat with the stab wizard. What will you do? Uh, Janlar probably doesn't need him to be blinded. Uh, Quartz is going to hold the staff out, kind of like pointing toward the thing, and start blowing really cold air out of his mouth that runs up along the staff. And then kind of like launches out, sort of like a flamethrower, but cold. Nice. Uh, a cold yeah. thrower. An yeah, a cold ice thrower. thrower. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for a nine to hit. So a nine to hit misses. misses. Uh, your your icy magic like hits. I freeze this... over the bush. Yeah, it hits this bush right here, and now there's a really icy bush that Janlar is like almost standing in. Awesome. All right, uh, uh, that's my action. So yeah. Nice. All right. Icy bush acquired. Gorik. What do you do? Gorik's gonna advance to there to uh -huh. get Janlar inside his guardians and make it so that if this thing wants to fight Janlar, it's gonna have to just tank this radiant hit. Okay. Uh, and then I'm gonna cast Guiding Bolt on that Darkling Elder. Ooh, roll the hits, please. D20. The, the Philosopher's Stone doesn't add anything to spell attacks, does it? Would you like to try to use it? Uh, it, it, it doesn't it just add a flat bonus. Hold on, let me anything. look. 
Uh, no, it's not like a flat, all my spells channeled through it are better. You have to, okay. anytime you use the Philosopher's Stone for any uh -huh. reason, you have to expend charges in it. Okay. Um, and... Do, 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 do. You can spend additional charges to increase the area of effect of any spell by one dimension. Okay. Well, I'm not super worried about that. I, I'll just... Uh... I'll just make a spell attack against him. Okay. That's a 10 only. misses as is your guiding bolt it hits the now frozen bush, melts yep. the frozen bush, and now we have yep. a wet bush. With which we have advantage to attack if we choose. And there is advantage to hit that yeah. bush. Yes. <laughs> All right. This bush is screwed, man. It, it yep. is. Yeah, it's going to have a problem. That's all I'm going to do. All right. Rose plus dead panthers. Just Rose. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Well, I think... Uh, I think this bush is just going to split into half as a giant bear. <laughs> sticks its head through. <laughs> the bear just runs through the bush. Like, screw this bush! It, like, digs exactly. it up with its claws, throws it somewhere. <laughs> Rose, Rose will have a long conversation with this bush afterwards where she apologizes for how it was treated during this combat. The one is an 18, one is a 16. Uh, both of those hits. So, five and eight damage. Alrighty, you claw and bite into this elder as it, as it struggles uh, against you, trying to cower behind the bush that had served it so well, but finding it inadequate. Uh, excellent. Uh, that brings us to Hugh, way up top. What do you do, Hugh? Hugh is not I think here. he said he's, he's AFK. Yeah, he said he, he's oh, he's gonna right be right back. He's back. He's back. Oh, hey. He's back. <laughs> oh, hey, Hugh, it's your turn. <laughs> okay, perfect. I'm gonna. I'm sorry. I had to grab something out of the back of the car. Um, it was just funny because Greg was just talking to your chair for a second. <laughs> I mean, it's here. It's good conversation. I mean, you know, he's like that. All right, so I'm gonna grab Esteban, and I'm going to move so 25 cunning action dash to uh, i'll pass through gen like go to here all right um does it use my action to grab esteban on the way through esteban oh if you want to grab him interacting with an object is weird uh no no interacting yeah. with an object is part of your movement right like opening a door okay all right. Well, I will attack. <laughs> You're attacking with Esteban? Uh, no. I don't oh, feel like you. You okay, drag okay. him with you and then let him go. I grab him so that he only moves thirty feet where I can move. 16. Enough with the touching. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Esteban Montague Garcia the Fourth is not pleased by you grabbing his hilt unwantedly. <laughs> He, he, the entire time you run, he's like, "Hand me, you fiend! I swear, I will stab you so many times!" Uh, but eventually, you make it here. Yep, I uh, roll a nineteen to hit. Uh, uh, nineteen hits. Twenty-three damage. Twenty-three damage. Esteban Montague Garcia the Fourth does not even have a chance to respond as this elder is ripped apart by you. And he explodes oh, outwards. Man. I need Janlar, Rose, and Hugh to make DC 12 constitution saving throws. All right. Oh, no, I finally don't vomit. All right, con rolls are the safety roll today. Uh, oh, made it. So those of you Nailed who it. passed take half damage. Uh, but uh, Janlar <laughs> will take four points of radiant damage. My as... uh, abjuration shield takes that. Mm, your shield just absorbs it. Can Esteban be injured, or is he, like, not concerned Unless... about this radiant damage? He's unconcerned about it as of now. You're okay. not sure if he can get injured or not. I don't think you've ever talked with him about it. Uh, I don't know if Gorik's ever talked to Esteban. I think you can hurt his pride at least. <laughs> I mean, yeah. he hurt his own pride one right, session right. where he couldn't stab something that was, like, super low AC, so... <laughs> yeah, that's my know. life! And so the five of you now sit atop this hill, very well lit by Esteban Montague Garcia IV. Um, but the the silence of night now surrounds you. I'm gonna take a moment feeling bad about killing a horse, and 
Uh, Quartz does not feel bad. In fact, he goes to cut out its eyes right away. Okay. I was not going to be as brutal, but yes, pretty much <laughs> the same thing. And I apologize a... <laughs> to Esteban. Rose but... is about to say something about you cutting the eyes. Like, you know, she's like, oh, I don't think you should touch. And then she just sees all your stuff. She's like, Sees like the twelve year old kid just like stab, stab, stab. Yeah, <laughs> <just> like, eh. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> All right, you're going to cut out the eyes of a nightmare. Um let me look up the creature loot really quick that we can get off a nightmare and I'll I'm get back to you on that one. Yeah, okay. I was gonna say if there was something like the yeah. main or something that mm -hmm. I could get a lock of. Yeah, I let me would. let me look that up. It's gonna take me a minute. Uh, anything else that you guys want to do on the top of the hill while I look that up? I'm yeah, probably just... would also make sure anything magical related we look up as well. Mm -hmm. use for the okay. Is right. the tail still of flame or did no. it like the fires right. of the nightmare faded and blinked out once the uh, once the final blow was struck? And Jandler's gonna stab this bush a couple times. <laughs> You have advantage. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, the bush has been thoroughly decimated uh, mm -hmm. by the many magical spells it tanked, and your daggers, and a bear. Uh, the, the bush will, will probably never grow right again. No, it comes back with two arms, and it's ready to jewel wield. And it it becomes a... a dire bush. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Greg, would you say that knowing things about nightmares would be arcana or religion? I could see a case um, for either. Really. I would I would say Arcana. Okay. Um, I've got the same bonus to either. So okay. I, I roll an 18 to see it, what Gorik knows about nightmares. Okay. Um, you know that nightmares are creatures of the Feywild that have been twisted to a darker purpose um, by some kind of dark ritual. Um, most nightmares begin as pegasi who have their wings removed and fell magics flooded into them to create this nightmarish creature. Um, but the more powerful it is, the more likely it is made from a stronger um, fey creature. There are rumors that the, the great dread steeds of legend um, were created by the corruption of a unicorn. Um, they have the ability to step in and out of the ethereal and fey plane um, as easily as, as stepping from one place to another in the material world. Um, they have the ability to confer fire resistance to their allies and take their allies with them to far strange places. Uh, it is known that the process of creating one is brutal and terrible, um, and it will bend them into, like, almost a pure form of hatred, um, wishing to tear into whatever, uh, terror, like, whatever living creature, whatever pure creature they can find. They often target the, the most pure, the most good first before moving on. Okay. Um, so knowing, knowing that this was at one point a, a good creature that was corrupted against its will, yes. uh, Gorik will go over and cast, uh, gentle repose on the body and administer sort of last rites to this thing, which has now been mm -hmm. put to rest and no longer suffering as a nightmare. Okay. So as Quartz is stabbing out its eyes, Gorik, yep. the, uh, cleric will walk over, uh, and kind of, kind of, kind of sh shoo Quartz away. <laughs> he, he, like it. Like the like the seven year old breaking a window that Gorik kind of feels like he is. He's like, eh, eh. <laughs> like kicking the body. So uh, the other thing that you will know, Quartz, uh, Gorik, and Janlar, as you study and think back to your nightmares, is the hooves of a nightmare um, are sp are particularly um, coveted uh, as they can become. Uh, hammers uh that never break uh both uh jewelers and blacksmiths um who wield a nightmare hoof hammer uh are capable of performing 
acts of, of blacksmithing or jewelry above and beyond most normal creatures. I love the idea that some some like jeweler that's like making like engagement rings or some bullshit like that is using an infernal like like <laughs> demon horse hammer as he's like <laughs> making right. his jewelry. Like I too imagine not... it sounds like a hoofbeat every time yeah. he hits the metal. Yes, he's like, he's I feel like, like that's not really like, good. I'm not bothered say. by the moral implications um, of this hammer. I'm you also going... know that the the corrupted heart of a nightmare. Uh, can be used by particularly powerful spellcasters to plane shift um, as a ritual, not expending their own magics, but the magic of this demonic heart. Um, but you are casted to a random location uh, instead necessarily of the intended destination 50% of the time. Nice. Uh, I feel like that would be awesome to cast on an enemy. Right, you just like playing shift with. The, with I think the playing shift is a self only spell. It is though. a it is a self targeting oh, spell. Yeah. Uh, and In fact, last... I think. And I mean, the... Quartz isn't really. Oh, <laughs> we keep interrupting each other. I don't think Quartz is particularly interested in the spell component side of things. Jandler would be though. Jandler would definitely, or not the spell components, but the uh, the hose for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, the eyes uh, can be bottled uh, like a liquid almost. Um, and when given magic, when, when incited by magic, uh, they cast light like a torch, uh, but this light draws any and all undead towards it, um, and it flickers until 1d6 hours until going out. That's cool. Is it like a reusable eye, or does the eye? No, get it's a like we ignite it with magic, and it burns for d six d six hours until. Expected. I was I was gonna tell them to crush it up like or uh, squeeze the jelly out of it and mix it into a tea as a remedy for heartburn. <laughs> <laughs> Savage. I think that would cure a very specific type of heartburn. <laughs> Before he cast into a pose on it, do we have time to get the hubs? Oh, you can get it after. Is this a race for oh, okay. parts? Jeez. I didn't. I didn't know if it would just like turn. I didn't know what it would gentle. No, it stops stuff. it from decomposing for oh, okay. duration. Oh, perfect. So then the hooves won't go bad. You're fine. Get the hooves. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Here, you're going to, to attempt to harvest the hooves of the nightmare. Um, I want you. You do not have a tool proficiency with um, anything that is uh, viable to this, right? No. No. Okay. I have um, I have glass blowers tools proficient. <laughs> glass blowing not quite gonna harvest you hooves. Glass um, blow they butchering all the same, right? I, I yeah, am I'm pretty dexterous. dexterous and I do have knives, so I, I am, to, yeah, uh, I'm, to step I'm in very for proficient that. with my daggers. Um, okay, wizard. so the stab wizard, I want you to make me a non-proficient. I don't want you to use your proficiency bonus. Um just uh uh, survival check. Uh, the non-using of the proficiency bonus is basically not having the tools at hand in order to actually Wait, is it do because this. he doesn't have survival? No, it's if he was trained in survival, I would disallow his proficiency because we don't have the proper tools um, oh. to, to make this happen. Okay. Um, and a 15 will get the job done. Hey. So after a messy 25 minutes or so with your daggers just chopping into the hooves, uh, you come away with a... Oops. With a 1d4. You come away with two perfectly harvested nightmare hooves uh, from the creature. You're gonna make so some money. As all the butchering is going on in the background, like, Rose is standing there with her back to the nightmare. She's just, you know, loudly musing to herself because she's not participating in the butchering. So you hear all those nice noises in the background. She just goes, So I'm wondering. This nightmare didn't seem to have any problems, even though its tail and hooves are technically on fire, right? Don't you think that is very interesting? Maybe it's an internal kind of fire. I think it is an infernal kind of fire. That too. For for the record, uh, yeah, that's fine. You can you can deactivate the auras, but Gorex Gorex aura lasts for ten minutes, and Hugh will be lit up 
for an hour. Yeah. Nice. Uh, 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 have, or not you, like, Esteban. We need that. I'm, I'm probably apologizing to Esteban as I walk over to sit next to Rose since I didn't plan to butcher the thing. I just wanted like a lock of its like mane or something to be like sentimental, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> they used to, like horse hair to make strings for instruments and stuff. I thought it'd be nice. And here these guys are like, I'm going to cut out its eyes and cut off its feet. Give me its heart. Can you imagine? Yeah, Jan Larry's thinking about taking the eyes, though. He's like how it. how metal the guitar would be that was strung with nightmare flame hair. I was, like, <laughs> if I was still Emily Pumpkin, totally doing that. Yeah. Making the loot with nightmare. <laughs> what a complete <laughs> death metal instrument. One of my yeah. favorite Dwarf Fortress glitches was the uh, I think it was like the lutes with strings that were made out of lava. Mm. Nice. So dwarves would just like burn their hands off trying to play. It. <laughs> All right, so uh, we've harvested hooves. Uh, did I hear that you were harvesting the heart as well? Not the heart. Um, Not the heart. I, I was actually I planning ask, on destroying the heart. I okay. would ask uh, Gorik if his uh, cleric, what's this group of cleric called? You're a grave domain cleric, right? A murder. A murder of clerics. Yeah, the murder no. of clerics. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably it's probably like a morning of clerics, right? Like, with <laughs> so like, with grave clerics, it's a morning yeah. or if, a if, murder. If his yeah, if they would want uh, these eyes, so I feel like they could be useful in defending a town from. What did what did the eyes undead? Do? Didn't they didn't they create they fire? The undead together. Oh, they, they call, call the undead. undead. They draw it in, so like if like a town is being attacked. By yeah, so if you wanted to like, to, like divert the undead, you could light up. You could light it like a beacon, and then They're like a bug draw light for it. undead creatures. It just it feels like something that they would want. And I, would I mean, want. I I do have the eyes. I already cut up the eyes. Oh, you already cut the eyes out. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you cut out the eyes. Uh, give yeah. me a uh, non-proficient survival check to. I do have proficiency with survival, and do I need anything besides a knife for eyes? It seems like the kind of thing that you'd use to harvest those. I have a couple of empty vials. That seems reasonable. Vial. Okay, give okay. me a proficient survival check. I don't know what you would use dexterity? to scoop out eyes. Uh, dexterity, definitely. Okay, Boom. so three plus three, so plus six. Uh, ten. Uh, a ten is a failure. So okay. you basically, you get the eyes God. out. You cut them out, but they are okay. essentially um, unusable. By okay, the time seeing that I've, that I've butchered the eyes a little bit, I do take the vial from Janlar and use it to fill up uh, some of the jelly that's leaking out. Okay, yeah. You have mashed up eyes uh, filling the vial. Awesome. That's gross on so many levels. <laughs> it's good for heartburn. Burning eye drops, that's what he's got there. <laughs> All right, so the five of you have butchered this animal, have cast a gentle repose upon it. Gorik gives it some last rites um, after it has been harvested, uh, and you stand alone on the top of the hill. Uh, between the harvesting and the, the ritual and just generally resting, uh, it's, an hour has passed, in, has passed since the, the final finality of the fight. Uh, and darkness closes in around you on the hill once again. Uh, what do you do? Maybe we should head back to town. I agree. She said that there could be things coming from the river, too. We should probably keep an eye on that. My alarm should still be set up here. It doesn't go out. Yes. So. Okay. That fight I can go also first. included like alarms ringing in your head. Yeah, like, the yeah I was thinking about time. it myself. I was like, every time, every time a creature came up. So Jandler would have been counting the creatures as they came up to make sure like none of them got away. Yeah. I like to imagine Jandler's watching away. it charge toward him, and then his alarm just goes ring, ring, ring. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it was when they first came in, though. So the worst snooze button in his. <laughs> yeah. All right, you begin making your way back through town. Uh, it is dark and it is night. Uh, and you are trying to make your way through unfamiliar and possibly Don't we have a light? hostile territory. I can I can cast light on. I have Esteban. I uh, gun the guys for an hour. It's an hour. It does, but I can. It's a cantrip. I can yeah. I can cast it again. It is dark and it is bright at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just you're making your way through hostile territory through the night, and you have a light to guide your way. I want the person with the highest survival in the party to roll, and I'll give you advantage for the for the bright light that uh, Gorik creates uh, to make your way back to town safely through the darkness. Uh, I have plus, plus five to survival. I have a negative one. Rose's. I have a twenty-one. So, yeah. 
That was a one and a thirteen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a, it's a twenty-one. Yeah. Uh, your group makes its way through the woods, uh, the bushes, the rocks, back towards town. Rose guiding unerringly through there. Um, the people with a passive perception higher than 13 in your party realize after some time that you're being followed um, at the edge of the light and every so often uh, you catch just a glimmer of like a green malformed hand or foot so occasionally a glancing like look at a jaw or a sharp tooth they never enter the light and they never get close enough to you to um really be found out or seen uh, as you make your way back through town okay uh so wait we oh i wouldn't i don't make your way back to town i don't never mind yeah i notice them Mm -hmm. i just don't say anything i just like lean over to rose you see the faces right Uh, if you think this is scary wait till we're in the gloom wood I, i mean it's 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 not so much it's scary it's there's a lot of them <laughs> oh yeah there's always a lot of them you know you usually just can't see them don't worry about it usually can't see them that's the concerning part because i can see them yeah we should get yeah, and that's why and that's why you're worried you know if you couldn't see them you wouldn't be worried right now so don't worry about it you're right you're right i do have this to give them and i'm like holding up a jar of aniseed and sugar <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's it's okay and i gently pat your shoulder like, you're doing fine keep it up keep up the good work and i just keep as, on walking <laughs> as we're walking i'm like putting some water in the jar shaking it up to like dissolve the sugar and that and i'm like okay yeah uh, let's take the lid off. like as we're going into our our uh the inn or whatever the tavern that we're staying at i like kind of like leave it by the door all right. I'm like, hey, you make, make your way just... back into town, and as the buildings come into view and your light kind of brightens the way, uh, you lose track of whatever it was stalking you. It seems that they do not come into town with you, as far as any of you can tell. Uh, as you make your way through the the building or the, the town, the buildings are locked up tight. Uh, you see rows of salt lining doorways uh, and practically undisturbed at a few houses you see basins with honey and sweetened waters and wines left out uh you catch the flitting shapes of some small flying fey creatures uh drinking of the of the honey along the way uh you see one almost dryad looking creature though not green and verdant and beautiful but gray and ashen and almost decayed looking as she spies the light as she greedily sips from a bowl of honey and then absconds with it out into the darkness uh eventually you make your way back to your inn uh where uh, a key was given to you uh knowing that you were going to be out uh, helping the town uh and you are able to uh, make your way back into the town and sleep safely uh locked away behind the iron bars of the inn's windows well, in the in the middle of the night, I would like to knock on Jandler's door. Mm-hmm. I'll open up. Hello? So, Jandler, I was wondering if you wanted to lure somebody in a trap and they would be really far away. And you would want to deliver some sense of urgency to them. How would you do that? I'm not following. You Well, let's imagine you really dislike somebody. Okay. Like a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and you want them to come to you mm-hmm. because you've made a trap for them. What is the trap? Oh, whatever, you know, something cruel, like your body turning inside out or, you know, a giant, a giant snake eating you or something like that. Okay. It, it doesn't matter for this purpose. Just think of a very cruel trap. Okay. Really bad trap. Okay. How would you make them come to your trap? Um, well, I would send them a message sending, uh, telling them that something that they loved or needed was uh, in the spot of said trap. Mm-hmm. 
um, and then hope that they come. Ah, great. That's it's what like I a thought. Really urgent sending. Mm, really urgent. Yeah. Maybe something that leaves you feeling very unsettled or, you know, yeah. worried. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, have a lovely night. And I turn around. <laughs> And I walk back to my room. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, and so the party goes to sleep, uh, resting at this inn after a worrying night among the forest. Uh, when you go to bed, I want all five of you to roll me a d10. Am I included in this since I didn't know Tom? Yes. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm winning. You're safe, Rose. One, well, seven, I sleep five. like a log. Yes, thank God. Hey, Gorik. <laughs> the winner of our D10 yeah, is Gorik. Gorik, you are visited in the night by terrible nightmares. Uh, the first of the dream, as is always, the, the image of this woman surrounded by a blue sphere of fire, her skin ever burning inside of it. The wails of her pain reach your ears, and on this night they are particularly horrifying. Um, you are visited again by dreams of, or the presence of Tom in your dreams. Uh, but you are soon whisked away into a different view. You see your whole, you see your hall of dwarves, and you see it crumbling and in ruin, decaying and falling apart. You see the book of your ancestors uh, being not only desecrated by lesser horrifying, like, small creatures, they're being eaten from the inside as if it was full of rot by grubs and worms uh, and the the maggots of, of decay and years you see the the fall of your um, altars and your uh, images of Ungral, and as you pull back away from the hall you see your ancestors all raising their from the dead crawling out of their honored homes as if forced into a life of undeath um, by some force uh, and with that, you are uh, that ends the the nightmare as you awaken. Uh, I want you to make me a DC fifteen wisdom saving throw. I totally want to become a badass. Twenty six. Like the nightmare affects you, and it, it is it is terrifying. But you are able to power through it and sleep well. Uh, you do not gain the level of exhaustion by it this night. Does does Janlar sleep okay? Does he lose his level of exhaustion? Janlar sleeps like a babe. I totally want this feat to give people bad nightmares that give them exhaustion before we go to the big bosses. Yeah. So there isn't any sign of um, regess or of like the, the silver rings or anything like Janlar described in his dream, right? It was just the... Just as I described it now, okay. yes. That similar like corruption to the, um, the creatures we fought in the Silver Lord's realm. Hmm. Could be. Interesting. Hmm. So we wake up to the town being ripped apart by Faye? Uh, the, the rest of you wake up after your, your night of sleep. Uh, you wake up with the sunrise, as does the rest of the town. Um, people are nervous and they look about, uh, but the, the town comes to life uh, and everyone goes to work, with many going to the docks to fish and to, to move on. Uh, the... Uh, there is a, eventually a, a wrap at the inn door uh, as it is getting prepared for the, the morning service and the uh, dwarven woman who runs the town comes in, um, still done up to the nines with her uh, position of office or her long ponytail perfectly braided. She's looking around for the five of you, asking for you. Um, eventually you come on down. She says, well, I wasn't certain that uh, Janla, the mighty wizard, was going to help us much, but it seems that we were not visited too terribly in the night, so whatever service you provided must have been uh, quite excellent. I, I would know what you what you heard and saw along the way this, this evening. I know you came in quite late. 
Yeah. Oh, speaking of, and I'm gonna give her the vial of the uh, the eye jelly. And she say, takes it, looks at it, looks at you. If you if you mix it up in a tea and and drink it, it's good for heartburn. Oh, is it now? Well, thank you. Uh, I know. Only if... only use a little bit because it is technically poisonous. Like maybe this much at a time. Oh, I see. Well, thank you, young one. I will keep that in mind. Yes. Uh, what? What is it? It's from a nightmare. It's the eyes of a nightmare. You mean the, the horse? Not not like the dream, but ah, yeah. I see. I see. You were visited by a nightmare upon the hill. She looks to the five of you seemingly in full health. Ah, I'm impressed. Kind of like scuffed. Try like <laughs> oh, I'm <scuffed>. Yeah. <laughs> you... You have handled yourselves quite well. Uh, I. She kind of looks back to Gemma. I, I am sorry to have been so short with you uh, last night. Uh, I did not... It, there are many it is a people, trying time. There are many people who claim to be great wizards around here. They very seldom are, especially foreigners who come to our land. So uh, thank you uh, for your, your service. Uh, tell me, uh, do you think you could understand why the fires are not lit? Were you to leave, I would be worried that worse may befall us. If we I'm cannot... fully aware of why the fires are not lit. Oh, I, do share. I fear it would insert even more widespread panic. <laughs> it would get it worse. A mm. god was captured. This guy. Oh. <laughs> A kid with no filter, yes. Is that so? <laughs> For Jess. Indeed. It appears that For Jess has been captured possibly by the silver lord and do you think some lord can capture a god I apparently huh. what do we do to free her then you, you i don't do know nothing. i'm still waiting for the dream myself you protect the town and you make sure that your citizens all come home each night and uh, i might suggest building a perimeter mm. um but uh, I will save the world, as I always do. <laughs> she laughs a little bit at as that. As I always <laughs> do. She, she can't help but to, to smile and chuckle at that. She says, well, uh, I am in the habit of doubting strangers. Perhaps I shall give you the benefit of the doubt on this one. Uh, I hear you'll be sailing soon this morning. Um, I cannot spare much if we are to truly begin... Um, such great construction in the town um, perhaps instead I could uh, uh, part with you just a, a small thing uh, she reaches into her, her pockets uh, and says this is a, a gift of the Elvendar uh, that was given to this town some many centuries back and passed down to, to governors uh, this should allow you some amount of uh, freedoms up there, perhaps, uh, that the uh, elves do not often give outsiders. Uh, she kind of presses it into your hand. You see that it is a ornate ring um, made of twisting silver, almost like roots and branches, uh, that is inlaid with an interesting green gemstone around kind of a leafy um, picture. Says, the uh, moment it gets put in his hand, you see Hugh, like, flick the eyepiece, and he's like, ooh. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just leaning over Hugh's shoulder since it looks so leafy, and I'm just, like, sticking my head over his shoulder on top. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, <laughs> hand, it back like... to, I'll hand it back to Rose as, as I get I it. think I'm like, oh. I says, know, right? Is it I'll, magical? I'll um, through your through your uh, lens, you can see that it is indeed very lightly enchanted, uh, though the the strength of the aura is quite dim. It's a, it's Please a don't be fire. fire! Please don't be fire! I put I don't it on. Think it's fire. <laughs> you you put the ring on. Feels good. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a nice. Silver it feels ring. good. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. I'll thank um, yeah again. And I'll thank her for the gift. Um, and I'll also tell her that anyone living outside the town's outskirts should probably move into town if they haven't already done so. Uh, sounds do they, good. Do they commonly have problems with the Fey here, or is was that just superstition because of the weird? I feel so targeted this game. It's crazy. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is the Fae going to burn down the entire village? And like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she she kind of shakes her head. She says, ah, there are problems around here. You, you, people who live down in the cities, uh, they don't understand. Out here, the fey creatures are in their home, their habitat. Some are tricksters and pranksters, and they annoy you, or they'll get angry at a farmer and make him disappear or turn into a cattle or something uh, for the most part entirely harmless some quite beneficial uh, some have been known to help us with a harvest or to help us with the fishing um, but they are a more violent type as well yeah. there are fae that would be quite damaging should they get into the city these superstitions they don't come from nowhere uh, we're a thousand years or more away from the awakening, but this is this is as a, as far as we've ever come from it. Uh, people had to live with these creatures before the magics and the rites were fully known. Uh, sticking to these rites out here is is of utmost importance. We have not had issue with them in some time, but I assure you, the stories you hear from the the elders are true. They're a place in your town where the people would fall back to if they were under attack. Oh. <laughs> a church, a keep. Sure, yes. Do you have a large tree? She shakes her head. Uh, there are large trees everywhere. We don't have a particularly individually large tree. A favorite one? Do you have a favorite one? Um, I prefer the trees just outside of Farmer Morstead's. They make delicious apples. Excellent. An apple tree it is. I'm sure some farmer can lead me to them, right? Um, yes. Yes. Um, absolutely. You, you can't miss them. She describes just like down south, uh, there's a, a grove of apple trees tended to by a farmer. Is Rose, is Rose off to awaken a guardian for the yes. town? Yes. Yeah. I am going to <laughs> awaken the best apple tree as a guardian of the town. All right. Um. Do, is there a church or anything in the town? She nods her head. She says, "I there, there are a few places of worship here. Where, um, where would people... Because this is, this is a city, right? It is a city, yes. Uh, we're uh, not the largest, but we we're, we're, we have enough trade along the river, both in and out of the Elvendar. That... Is there a garrison or something where... Yes, uh, we have a we have a few small places of worship, like you say. We we have um, the the governor's office. The it's kind of a city center. Uh, many merchant homes are, are quite well fortified. Right, I I will let her know that if she if she can acquire like a small like lockable chest or something like that for me, I can give them a one time sort of last resort defense against a fey attack. A lockable chest. It's all you need. I need, I, yeah, something something that you can open that would prevent it from going off accidentally. A lockable I, chest would be useful. How big you need? We have. I don't think it. I honestly don't think it matters that we're much. A, so we're like a, a trade small... city along the coast uh, a, yeah. of a river. Uh, we have many lockable chests. Yes. All right. So if if she can get me one, I would like to use the philosopher's stone to provide the material components. Uh huh. For the glyph of warding spell. Absolutely. So, Which... um, when we use the non equivalent exchange, you cast a spell that requires material opponents. Um, you expend the number of charges um, as number of components that you are ignoring. Okay. So, how many? Is it like one charge per gold piece or? Per component. So if you have a five hundred dollar okay. component, but it's just one, then it's one charge. If okay. you have a um, seven two dollar components, then it's seven charges. Okay. So um, I guess this would be two then: incense and powdered diamond, okay. worth at least two hundred gold. So on your character sheet somewhere, please mark down two expended charges, and we'll get back to them from time to time. Okay. And I will type up all the like things you know how to do with it and send I need it to, to find you. Somewhere to write this. I'll write it in level nine spells. I'm not likely to get those before the end of the campaign. That would be quite remarkable. We would yeah. be doing some serious power leveling. Philosopher. I accept that challenge. We fight. We just need to go into the forest and, and kill boars. We fight everything. Okay. <laughs> Hold my Mountain Dew. All right, I'm well, on. hang on, because I'm I'm gonna expend a couple more because I'm using Glyph of Warding. Uh huh. Uh, I'm inscribing it on an object that can be closed, like a chest. 
the uh, the mayor just like asks the the innkeeper to bring her one of their larger yeah. chests and buys it outright uh, like in the middle of the common room and sets it at your feet. All right, I will. I will. Well, I need the. I need to, to cast the spell where the chest is going to stay. So fall. You know, she I'll rolls her it. eyes a little. Says, "All right, <sighs> wizards, what can you do?" And uh, <laughs> she, I totally look like a wizard. Yeah, she has up the chest. <laughs> She hefts up the chest and and takes you to basically her office in the okay. in the center of town. There's a kind of a larger building um, that serves as kind of like where the town guard meets and where the the heads of the of the city meet. And she has as the mayor her her office there. Okay, governor mayor. I think I've called so, her both. Yeah, whatever. I'll use glyph of warding to use the spell glyph and store. Uh, a magic circle spell in it. Okay. So when the glyph is triggered, it will cast magic circle in a 10 foot radius, 20 foot tall cylinder, which um, I'm going to choose to exclude elementals, fey, fiends, and undead. Oh, you're uh, excluding them from the circle, so they can't go in. Yes, perfect. Right. Yeah. 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 I won't. <laughs> I won't exclude uh, celestials if they have celestial allies. I don't think they're going to get attacked by celestials, and if they do, they probably did something to deserve it. So. Yeah. Fair enough. But yeah, elementals, fey, fiends, or undead. If they attack, they won't be able to enter the circle by any sort of non-magical means. All right. That sounds good. Let me make note of that. Yeah. Uh, I'll, and I'll so let you. Them I'll explain. I'll explain how it works to them. for For one hour, they'll be able to hold in that circle mm -hmm. and and fey creatures or undead, etc. She kind of scratches her, her the back of her head and pulls on her ponytail a bit, but eventually she understands the the workings of it. Says, uh, "Quite a last defense you have there. Well, we'll hopefully never have to use it, but I appreciate the service you're providing our our city." Well, it unless unless someone dispels it or moves this chest out of the area, and so All I'll right. tell her it's very important that it stays here. Well, then I will make sure that no one has access to it but myself and a uh, few of my most trusted uh, advisors. Yeah, and if they do that, that should that should give them a at least a moment's respite from from any attack that's going on. Hopefully, an hour will be enough to. Rally. Rally, yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah, very smart. Ah, wizards, I guess. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, where did your young friend, who looks like a tree, go off to? I... Oh, she's going to um, animate one of your apple trees. Oh. Oh. Well, that will sure give a fright to everyone in the city. <laughs> I'm sure we can explain that. Will, will it be friendly? Um, at least as friendly as anyone else that you encounter on the road, certainly. It oh. will have its own personality. If you're a dick to it, it will probably be a dick right back. Yeah, and I probably wouldn't try to tree, chop it down. If it's an apple tree, it comes with built-in projectiles. <laughs> I was going to say, it can eat the that. apples and then shoot the seeds. Uh, well, huh? I I sure hope that this does not incite too much panic in the town. But thank you. Yes, uh, any any help that you are able to give us is much appreciated. Uh, I would I would give you more, but I, I fear that that ring is is the best I can do. Should we need to expand the fortifications of our city too much? Hmm. Uh, and with that, Rose, uh, tell yes. us about <laughs> you and your and your tree. Uh, what's, well, what's going I think. On? I think um, I'm trying to find that that orchard, and I finally find that farmer. And like you, a pretty awkward about twenty minutes long conversation with Rose. Like, you want to do what farmer. with my trees? <laughs> exactly. I earn a living not, with them. Well, you can still. I, it's just going to be one first of all, and secondly, it's going to protect the town and you and your orchard. How much for Thirdly, one tree? You can still what? You can buy one tree. It's an orchard. You can I need still them all. I'm harvest it. it. You can still harvest it. All you gotta do is you gotta you bow to. friendly to it, and if it bows back, you can pick the apples. It's very simple. It's like basic tree, you know, culture. It's not hard. If you treat it well, it will treat you well, and it will protect you and your farm and your family and your what kind of animal do you have again? I got a dog. And the dog. Yeah. It's a good yeah. dog. It protects me too. Exactly. So it should have somebody who protects it as well. 
All right, so you're gonna make a tree a dog? I'm into it. I'm gonna name it Fluffy. Uh, well, if you want to name it Fluffy, we it's possible. I, I can do it. Hey, honey, she gonna make a tree dog. Gotta get out of here and look at the tree dog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> These tree and people I, are magic. <laughs> and I'm going to um swirl my stuff in my hands and then gently <laughs> tap it against the oldest the oldest apple tree there is. Okay. Um Yes, and I would like to animate the apple tree, please. Animate or um Awaken. There's there's two different spells. There. Awaken. 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 Is, uh, okay. Yes. Okay. Awaken. The, the apple tree kind of groans and it, sh it sh like shakes its its limbs as if stretching out. Apples fall to the ground. Um, the farmer's like, ah, oh, it's fluffy. He moving. <laughs> <laughs> the tree kind of looks around and says, mm -mm. "Hello, little one." Hello. It has been a long time since I could move freely like this. I don't think I can remember a time when I could, in fact. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoy it. I, it just comes with a tiny request, if you don't mind. Mm, if it is within my power, I will grant it to you, little one. So listen, I think there are some... A few dark days ahead of us. I'm not quite sure how many, but a few at uh, least. The sun sets early this time of year and rises late. The nights are indeed long, but don't fret, little one. I have seen many winters come and go. The sun will return in its glory. Just a few months' time. That's good to hear. Until the sun returns, at least until then. Would you maybe lend your protection to these people mm. and the town nearby? Do you know what they do to our children? They bake them and put them in pies. How <laughs> savages they are. I have seen them squeeze them until they pop and drink their juices. Listen, I never said that they are perfect. Okay, but in dark times, we sometimes have to, you know, form a group. But even if some people are a little awkward or a little different, mm. and we got to make the best out of a bad situation. <sighs> well, I suppose. Yes, I suppose. You did awaken me. I want this tree will... to turn into a crazy, like, like street prophet like preaching on the corner and, you know, <laughs> repent you from your apple eating eyes? ways yeah <laughs> uh, i will do what i can to honor to honor i am still learning how to talk it has only been a it's few difficult minutes. yes i, I understand don't worry about I it i will attempt to honor your request well i am very honored to have such a guardian around here and I gently lay one hand on the, on their bark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. The tree gives you like a big hug. Get an apple branch yep. hug. And then the, the <laughs> farmer just sits a there just like stunned. I think, mm -hmm. I think Fluffy's going to be a problem, honey. <laughs> He's not going to be a problem, but you well, have you to, to treat each working. other well. Okay. This is your chance to form an unending friendship that's going to last for generations. Don't mess it up. I thought my tree dog would be a little bit more like my dog dog. All right. Uh, all right. Well, Mutual well, we relationship. Dog. Sounds good, tree dog. You need some Very food? Very good. I got, I got some kibbles. He's fine. Just, just water it. Just what is fine. <laughs> Water for the tree dog. All right. Very good. <laughs> very good. And very proud of herself of having accomplished such a great feat. <laughs> Return to town having summoned an apple tree guardian. Very concerned farmer with his. I'd like, He's I'd like to figure know it out. what sort of uh, 
unique magical protections Janlar provides the town now that we've seen Gorik <laughs> and Rose's contributions. Nothing. It's gonna be like <laughs> nothing. Janlar's nothing. just like, hey, I'm out. Nope. <laughs> All right. Um, lasting effects I can cause. Uh, with that, I love your farmers. Your farmers are amazing. <laughs> Uh, with that, uh, you are loaded back onto the Zephyr's Wind, uh, and the ship sails once more down the moon flow, uh, crossing into the Elvendar. Uh, and we've reached four o'clock. I know we didn't quite get an on-time start, um, but I think most of you need to leave on time anyway. So that is where our uh, session will come to an end for today. Uh, I will calculate some XP for you while I do that. If you have anything you want to shout out to chat, now would be the time to do it. Do you want to go first? Who are you talking to? You. Anyone? Uh, Jump not in. me. <laughs> sure. Uh, as, as per usual, um, Haruthax is now back on the LUQ podcast. I was there for our last recording session, and as of, I think, yesterday, if you are a patron of the Slapdash Bye. page, you can listen to the uh, Haruthax one-shot that we recorded for the uh, time that I was not here. Um... I can see if I can find the Slapdash patron. I don't know where it's at. It's in here somewhere. Um, I'll link that in chat. Uh, actually, you know what? In all probability, there's a link to it on the Slapdash website. Hey, look. I found it in two clicks. <laughs> Copy and paste. There you go. If you're a patron of Slapdash on Patreon, then you can listen to the special one-on-one -on -one session that uh, Law and I recorded in which I um, try to be Rambo and the dice decide that I'm going to be Chief Inspector Cluzo instead. Um, but whew, there you go. Um, I think that's that's about it for me. Go Ducks today. They're playing Cal in about Go Ducks! Go Ducks! Yep. Go Ducks. Um, if you want to see more of me, I stream a ridiculous amount every week slash month. You could probably catch me in all time zones. I'll probably be going live in the next hour. I don't know what I'm going to be playing, but I'll be live here on Twitch. You can catch me at twitch.tv slash millman. I'll see you around. You, I get random questions about Seekers all the time in stream. Don't be afraid to ask, but just understand, <laughs> I don't know everybody's answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh... All right, Sean, you got Hardcore Heroes tomorrow. You should shout that. Yeah, out. yeah. I got I got Hardcore Heroes with Nick tomorrow. Um, so so the the comedy duo is back in action. Yes, everybody uh, hyped for that. It's pretty sick. Yeah, and then aside from that, in my in my brief moments of spare time, I'll probably uh, hop in on the new Path of Exile League because it's Ooh. this weird new tower defense game mode that they made in an action RPG. So I don't know what they're thinking, but whatever it is, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, well, so maybe give that a try because Path of Exile is great. Nice. And free. It's very free. It's so free that I've spent like $50 on it. <laughs> it's so free. <laughs> the freest. <laughs> the freest. Awesome. Uh, Faye, anything you want to shout out? No, no, I mean, always keep, always take your keys with you when you leave. All right. Yeah, Ball don't get locked Twitter. out of your apartment. Don't get okay. locked out of your apartment and buy the big pizza, even if people tell you otherwise. Like, Everybody. I'm good. 875 right. experience points for everyone and one very disappointed nightmare that he didn't drag any of you to hell so you, said eight, seven, you said how much do you say wait how 875 much? xp everybody yes. say hi to neil because he's in chat yes hey neil <laughs> are you, you finished tomorrow. already do you even did know? you kill all your people no no i've never met neil <laughs> okay i was gonna say like what <laughs> but my wife, but my wife uses his character sheet for Five E because she really likes it. Because it's dope, so. isn't it's, it? It is the best Five E character a, sheet. I use really it too. Oh, character. don't do that to him. He does deserve this praise. Keep it low, people. Keep it low. <laughs> it is a great. It deserves Neil, the that's praise. Funny. All right. Uh, with that, everybody have a great week. I will see you again here next time for some more trip down the river. Uh, hopefully we'll have some exciting things. Uh, have a great day, night, week, or whatever it is. Until I do see you again. 
Goodbye, everybody. Bye.